All right, guys. Well, unbelievably, it's not raining here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York on this gloomy gray Tuesday, I believe August 17th, uh, 2021. Apparently, we are not going to see the sunshine until Sunday is the latest forecast as pretty much Bugs in a Jar Farm just molds this fungus, this is the, the fungus farm. I ought to go into mushroom farming. But anyway, while I have this rare 10 minute break in the rain, better do what I do every day. And that's it here and chronicle the collapse of a planet. And uh, at least since last week, the hilarious uh, grabbing at straws to try to uh, turn this freight train around. Guys, you know, on, on one level, I'm getting as sick as you are of this whole code red for humanity. Uh, but that seems to be the, uh, the topic of interest in the Zoomosphere. So I am uh, just having fun chronicling the, uh, the hopium and reaction to it. And, and I have to admit, I'm a little bit embarrassed by Vice News, their motherboard. See, motherboard is like the uh, techno-utopian um, part of Vice News. Now, I, I'm not even, I, I don't even have the stomach to click on <clears throat> from their news desk. Countries might actually hit <clears throat> their climate targets. Really? <clears throat> Uh, but anyway, I, I, I can't even tread there. I uh, cannot, I, I can't even read the first sentence of that article. But I do want to thank, um, thank Alert Tribes member Lieutenant Tom from Vermont is one of my main uh, lieutenants here at Collapse Chronicles. So he sent me this, uh, this knee slapper, not quite as bad. But we're going to read a little bit of this hopium as much as I can stand. And then we're going to go over to oilprice.com to hear what the uh, big oil investors are, how they are responding for a dose of reality. But first we're going to hear from those techno-utopians from Motherboard uh, at Vice News. <clears throat> How the economy has to radically transform to end fossil fuels in 20 years. Coming disruptions will eventually lay waste to conventional jobs in incumbent fossil fuel, combustion engine, and livestock farming industries. Yeah, so first is, you know, written in that, we're, uh, that we have 20 years okay to uh save the planet first uh, you, you need to buy into that that we have 20 years and then the real knee slapper is how are we going to do this <clears throat> let me make this a little bit bigger for my old man eyes <clears throat> to avoid the worst of climate changes disastrous effects humanity needs to slash carbon emissions and and remove carbon from the atmosphere, you know, suck it out of the sky, at a pace and scale often said to be eye-wateringly difficult, expensive, and even unlikely, even unlikely given the continued failure of political will, we will come back to this even unlikely in our next article from oilprice.com and I'm just going to plow ahead through uh, through this techno-utopian uh, BS. <clears throat> that is the implication of the IPCC's report published <clears throat> last week <coughs> which concludes that a one and a half degree Celsius rise in global average temperatures is now 
inevitable in 20 years. It's probably inevitable in about 20 minutes, unless you live in the Finger Lakes of New York, where it is right now, I think, 72 degrees on uh, August 17th. <clears throat> the IPCC's best case scenario, the best case scenario, concludes that if we act fast, we might be able to gradually reduce temperatures back down to 1.4 C by the year 2100. Yet, this would keep us in the 1.5 C climate danger zone for decades, which could risk triggering tipping points that could lead to irreversible and even more dangerous shifts in the climate system. Against this background, the Biden administration's infrastructure bill, yes, more infrastructure to save the planet, has offered a watered down set of policies that simply will not contribute to the scale of change required. Sounds, uh, so it's time to bring on the hopium with but. <clears throat> but a new report <coughs> by technology forecasting think tank Rethink X. The name of this group is Rethink X finds that the scope for change could be far larger and faster than either the IPCC or powerful governments like the United States realize. Because the most powerful fossil fuel based industries in the world, oil, gas, and coal, livestock farming, and combustion engines are going to, are going to become obsolete purely due to extent economic factors well within the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well within the next 20 years. According to Rethink X, they are being increased, these industries are being increasingly disrupted by a cluster of clean technologies, you, you know, the, uh, the bright green uh, New Deal, the, the lying, bright green, bright greenwashing New Deal by a cluster of clean technologies in the energy, transport, and food sectors, which are rapidly becoming cheaper, more efficient, and as a result, more ubiquitous. If the world, if the world recognizes this dramatic shifts in ends protections. I, my rant yesterday or at some point was about ending subsidies for fossil fuels. If the world recognizes this dramatic shift in ends protections for incumbent industries as well as invest strategically in the most optimal sectors and technologies, <clears throat> Humanity will, humanity will be able to eliminate, <coughs> eliminate 90% of global carbon emissions within the next 15 years and reach net zero by 2040 or even well before 2035. This is far faster than most conventional analysts, such as the of oilprice.com, we're going to get to in just a minute. This is far faster than most conventional analysts, including both the IPCC and the U.S. government, believes possible, saving trillions of dollars in the process and ushering in a new era of post-carbon prosperity. Yes, but if governments, banks, and powerful corporations choose to obstruct this coming transformation, as the U.S. Senate appears to have done, 
we will find ourselves in the climate danger zone <coughs> going above two degrees, two degrees C and breaching the safe limit ratified by governments around the world under the Paris Agreement. Shut up. I've had all I can't believe I made it that far. Uh, the, 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 this uh, unbelievable greenwashing horse pucky going on and on. V Vice News, Shane Smith, I ought to reach through here and slap you in the face. Shane Smith doesn't believe for one minute, uh, one word of this crap uh, that he uh, puts. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to get down. Let's read the last three paragraphs. That was the first three paragraphs. So let's skip ahead to the last three paragraphs, and then we're going to get a dose of reality over at oilprice.com. But sticking with the techno utopians for three more paragraphs, the extraordinary dynamics of the new post-carbon system could allow us to reduce the material footprint of human civilization to operate safely within our planetary boundaries while creating new forms of clean prosperity, finally breaking the historic cycle of civilizational growth and collapse. Yes, this new post-carbon energy transport and food system will have entirely new properties to the old industrial <clears throat> paradigm, but to make it work will require us to completely reorganize our societies and economies. Prevailing political and economic structures will be completely dysfunctional for this new system. We will need new decentralized, networked, and non-hierarchical structures and institutions to distribute and maximize the benefits. The stakes could not be higher and the path ahead is fraught with peril. But with this compelling evidence that we have everything we need to solve the climate crisis, there is simply no excuse for inaction. Yes. Okay, guys. Uh, I think we've heard enough of this crap. So we are going to go over to a someone with brains. We are going to go over to oilprice.com, and I have uh, been recommending oilprice.com for years for a reality check uh, against all of this pie in the sky, sucking the carbon out, uh, the, all of this crap. Okay, let's listen to what these oil investors are talking, who of course uh, are trying to prop up the fossil fuel industry. So for another side of this debate, let's just hear from the editors at oilprice.com. What happens if we stop pumping oil tomorrow? Yes. In a traditionally slow news month, such as August, any event of relative significance gets abundant coverage, yet the latest report by the IPCC was not just an event of relative significance. It was, based on media coverage, an event of huge significance. This significance lay lay in a stark warning. Quit fossil fuels or ruin the planet. Yes. The report basically said 
that if we do not act immediately, we would never be able to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius from pre-industrial times. It also noted that some of the changes human, human activity has inflicted on the planet are already irreversible. In comments on the report, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, quote, this report must sound a death knell for coal and fossil fuels because they destroy our planet, close quote, adding, quote, countries should also end all new fossil fuel exploration and production and shift fossil fuel subsidies into renewable energy, close quote. The world must urgently wind down fossil fuel supply in an orderly and, transp and transparent way and halt high-risk, high-cost oil and gas exploration today, said the founder and executive chair of Carbon Tracker. These reactions, especially the UN's Guterres call to end all oil and gas exploration, sound quite familiar. The reason is that they echo a call by the International Energy Agency for an end to all new oil and gas exploration before the end of 2021. The IEA made that call in its net zero roadmap, which saw demand for oil and gas decline fast because of the availability of alternative energy sources. Soon after the report was released, however, that same International Energy Agency that called for the end of all oil and gas exploration made another call, this time a call to OPEC. Yes, the agency asked the cartel to start pumping more oil as demand for fossil fuels was rebounding faster than expected, pushing prices higher. U.S. President Joe Biden, who has set a goal to make the U.S. economy net zero by 2050 and slash emissions by 50% by 2030, this week also called on OPEC to boost production. The reason? Prices at the gas pump were too high for American drivers. Hmm. The message coming from the IEA and the White House might seem confusing at best and hypocritical at worst, but let's say it was possible for every oil company in the world to decide at the same time to stop the pumps. What would happen then? The short answer is, of course, chaos. Thank you. Uh, as I, you know that just you know that rant I was doing about fossil fuel subsidies uh, on Sunday, uh, setting off Mad Max. Uh, you know that's just ending the subsidies. Let's say we just end the gasoline. We're just going to stop pumping oil tomorrow, and just move ahead to your uh, clean green energy. All right. The short answer is, of course, chaos. The longer answer covers pretty much every part of any and every economy on the planet and virtually every industry. It will be a while before the full effects begin to be felt because there are still stockpiles of oil, gas, and petrochemicals but even f before these begin to dwindle, prices will skyrocket because of the impending supply outage. And this means 
the prices of everything. Of course, the big one being gasoline. Uh, this is J.R. Young, CEO of King Operating Corporation, an oil and gas investment firm. Quote, if there was no oil, iPhones, technology, computers, plastics, all manufactured products, food, and medicines would not be able to be produced. So the people in the United States living the Amish lifestyle would be implicated the least. I want you to know that all of this lumber and this tiny house you're looking at was built by an Amish guy using a gasoline powered a gasoline powered uh, sawmill. This is you are looking at wood uh, and then of course trucked here in my truck and my gas sucking truck. I'm assuming the uh, logs were cut this former pine tree, I'm sure fossil fuels cut down the logs, fossil fuels got the logs to the Amish, uh, to the Amish sawmill, fossil fuels ran the sawmill, fossil fuels got the, got the boards back to my place, and to the extent that electricity uh, is, you know, anyway. Getting back to uh, getting back to J.R. Young, quote: We, as a society, have lost the ability to survive without the food chain and delivery of products. Coal, if we stopped pumping oil, coal would continue to increase and the CO2 and pollution would increase at a dramatically increasing rate. Billions, billions of people would die, societies would fail, and the migration to a clean future would be over. There you go. So what is the answer if we stop pumping oil tomorrow? Billions would die societies would fail, and the migration to a clean future would be over. Hmm, do you think so? It would be difficult to argue with such a vision, uh, but you better believe these techno-utopians will. Uh, it would be difficult to argue with such a vision regardless of whether it comes from the oil industry or not. Payal Rastogi, <clears throat> founder principal at Carbon Fix Fixers, an Indian company working with businesses to make them more environmentally sustainable, shares <clears throat> Young's opinion, quote, if we stop consumption and drilling for oil and gas as of today, all the global products and life will come to a standstill, she says. Before this standstill, however, there is bound to be a lot of action, none of it friendly or peaceful. <clears throat> right now, right now, a price rise of about one dollar per gallon of gasoline is prompting the president, who has made it clear that he is not a supporter of the oil industry or gasoline, to call on the world's oil producing cartel to increase oil production as unhappy drivers make for unhappy voters. <clears throat> now imagine what would happen if the price per gallon of gasoline rose not by one dollar, but by five dollars in a matter of days. You don't even need to imagine it. We have seen what happens when fuel shortages hit in Venezuela, for example. The U.S. 
has only one month's worth of oil supply, says Dr. Jerry Bailey, chief executive of Utah-based company Petrotech Energy Corporation. If oil production stops, the country would be plunged into an immediate depression because a vast amount of U.S. industries depend on the commodity. Since this is true of all economies, and not just the United States, multiplying the effect expected for it by the numbers of countries in the world should provide the full picture, which will not be pretty. One might perhaps argue that these are the opinions of people from the oil industry or from a group Collapse Chronicles, but it would be difficult to counter these opinions in any rational way. The truth is that modern civilization is dependent on hydrocarbons. A transition away from this dependence cannot happen overnight, and it cannot happen forcibly because of the fallout. Quitting cold turkey is the hardest way to kick a bad habit, and not always successful. Maybe we have a better chance of weaning ourselves off oil and gas if we approach the transition in a calmer, less alarmist manner. Yeah, so that is the reasoned voice, the reasoned rational voice of the oil industry. Uh, anyway, all, all of this crap. Uh, and, and we don't even need to open uh, the next two. This is just the, the outermost layer uh, uh, of the doomsday onion. Uh, this, this onion skin thin debate that we're having. And I uh, say then bright green lies gets to the next layer of the onion uh, about how everything they are uh, suggesting as an alternative to fossil fuels is a joke that will destroy the planet as well, if not better, than fossil fuels. And then, of course, you get to the third layer of the onion, that if we really did come up with, with a, a clean, free energy, it would be the end of the planet. <clears throat> There is no way out. As long as humans are walking this earth, they're going to be eating this planet. That is what we do. We are termites. We eat the planet. But anyway, I need to uh, wrap up this rant because it looks like the next wave of, <clears throat> of, of fungus is moving in. <coughs> And I have about 15 pounds of organic tomatoes i got to start turning into salsa so I can enjoy some fresh hot salsa out of my garden while I still can. And I suggest you enjoy all of your fresh organic salsa out of your garden while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, you lazy little dog. Gee, a rainy day in the Finger Lakes. I'm so glad I moved to upstate New York to escape the, uh, the droughts and the heat waves and the wildfires so I can sit here and slowly mold to death. Bye, guys.